What has happened? Where did I go wrong? How could my child have so completely turned his back and what, on what I taught him when he was just a little boy? Well, he has learned well from his teachers in school. D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Today on Truths That Transform, a virtual SWAT team invades a Christian school. This case is extremely important because it's not just going to impact uh, this one Christian boarding school. We will give you a vital opportunity to do something about this outrageous situation. And you will be encouraged by some recent religious liberty victories. Join us now for Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. America was founded by those who came here for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith. So says the Mayflower Compact. The great Christian John Winthrop, who founded Boston, the cradle of our liberties, said, they came to create a city on a hill. And indeed, America became a beacon for freedom and even prosperity. But today, the forces of cultural Marxism and identity politics threaten that freedom at virtually every turn by trying to exorcise the Christianity it was based upon. How bad can it get? Well, in California earlier this year, a virtual SWAT team assaulted a Christian boarding school because of some unfounded internet rumors. But when the state was confronted with its misdeeds, rather than apologize, it's doubling down on persecution. Our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb has more. Religious liberty is very important, but we, we have that kind of confusion everywhere, that they treat religion like it's um, something dangerous, like it's uh, uh, anthrax, it's uh, asbestos in the ceiling tiles, and that uh, you know you have to get the government hazmat team out to remove the religion from the public area or whatever. In my view, religious freedom is at more at risk today than it has been certainly in my lifetime. I mean, the threats that religious people are facing in their ability to live out their faith in all aspects of their lives are really unprecedented. We can't just take for granted any longer these First Amendment freedoms of uh, private education that, with the religious component. We really have to be willing to fight for it. Uh, fight in love, but also fight in truth and realize that we've been granted some incredible blessings here historically in the United States. We've been granted uh, the gift of the First Amendment and the promise of freedom to express ourselves and to learn according to our own beliefs, uh, but we can't take those gifts for granted. Many experts agree that religious liberty is at risk in our time. This is often accentuated in the more secular-oriented states, such as California. A case in point is a little-known incident from earlier this year at a Christian boarding school located north of Sacramento. The Riverview Christian Academy is a nonprofit Christian boarding school. The kids who often go to the Riverview a Christian Academy are often kids who uh, have had difficulties and problems. And it's been very successful. In January 2019, something horrific happened to Riverview Christian Academy. Uh, you see, uh, state troopers, uh, along with representatives from the licensing board, Child Protective Services, uh, they raided this campus, uh, along with even canine units uh, with guns. And they looked at everything, they questioned everyone. Uh, they were out to, uh, uh, to, to shut down this school uh, or to, to find out if there was uh, something insidious taking place. Apparently, 
uh, what had happened was a, an article uh, from a, a far leftist uh, source on the internet put an article out attacking this wonderful Christian boarding school. Uh, and what happened was instead of uh, the, the, the authorities, uh, you know, checking it out, investigating, uh, they got a, a court warrant based on this, this flimsy uh, old uh, article from a leftist site on the internet to go in and do a full raid uh, without any prior notice. And it was very, very traumatic. Reportedly, there was a girl who was struggling with uh, same-sex attraction. And because the school uh, didn't placate into this, and affirm this and say, oh, this is a wonderful thing for you to engage in. Because they didn't do that, instead they went the other way and gave her a biblical perspective on that kind of a lifestyle. Uh, allegedly, uh, that was the basis for uh, why they wanted to shut down this school. Riverview Christian Academy had absolutely no warning prior to the raid in January of 2019. Uh, the, the SWAT team came in, Social workers came in, canine units came in, and after they, they didn't find anything, instead of apologizing, instead of apologizing, they decided to double down. The battle here boils down to worldviews in conflict. Does a private Christian school have the right to promote biblical values of sexuality, or is the state allowed to dictate what those values should be? After the raid, the school has been fined on a daily basis. It continues to operate while fighting for their rights in the courts through the help of the Pacific Justice Institute. This school is still open, make no mistake. And they are committed uh, to standing up against this tyranny. They're not paying that fine uh, because that fine is illegal. It is unconstitutional. This case is extremely important because it's not just going to impact uh, this one Christian boarding school. But it's much worse than that. Uh, you see, there, it's going to inspire other states and state legislators who are uh, dominated and controlled by the radical LGBTQ movement uh, to pass similar mandates and also to shut down those Christian boarding schools as well. This is a, an extremely important case, and that's why we at the Pacific Justice Institute are treating it so seriously. This is an outrageous story. The message the state is sending is loud and clear. Change your beliefs or we will shut you down. We want to ask you to join us in doing something about this. We have put together an urgent petition to the Attorney General of the United States respectfully calling upon him to use his full legal authority to uphold the First Amendment and put a stop to this gross violation of religious freedom by whatever means are available to him, including prosecution and cutting off federal funding to California. Friends, these are the same tactics used by the fascists in Europe in the 1930s and we cannot stand by and allow this blatant abuse of state power without speaking up. So please join us in calling upon Attorney General Barr to intervene. Please sign the petition and return it to us immediately so that we can join your voice together with thousands of others to put a stop to this. To receive your petition, simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. Now, some might say, oh, well, that's just left-leaning California. But a simple look around shows that those on the left are working to control and restrict Christian schools, churches, and ministries, and using the government to do their bidding. Why? Because Christian teaching represents the biggest obstacle to their radical agenda. 
Nobody was more vocally supportive of Christian education than Dr. D. James Kennedy. And I'm joined now by his daughter and my very dear friend, Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy. Jennifer, your dad was clear in his understanding that eventually public education would be used to brainwash children. That's right, Frank. Because he was a student of history and he knew that it had happened before. My dad made it very clear that the Bible teaches that it's a parent's responsibility to train up a child in the way he should go. And my dad warned that when the secular schools in our day are allowed to usurp more and more of the parent's role in teaching the children, things can go badly astray. Our schools are too often becoming places where indoctrination has replaced education. Little Johnny might not be able to read or write when he graduates from many of our public schools, but he sure knows how to be politically correct. My father sounds an alarm we all need to hear in this portion of his message, Training Your Children. In the 1400s, Janissaries were the name given to the children of Christians who were abducted by the Ottoman Turks in the Byzantine Empire and from Constantinople. Now, by 1453, these Janissaries who had been taken as young children and had been taught the doctrines of Mohammedanism and had been then, when they grew older, taught the, the arts of warfare according to the Ottoman Turks, the Janissaries were part of the army of Mohammed II that surrounded the remaining bastion of Christian influence, Constantinople. They had taken, the Turks had taken, all of Byzantium except the capital city. And in 1453, they surrounded that city. A siege of many weeks took place. Finally, in utter weariness, the Defenders were no longer able to defend the city, and the, the Ottoman Turks broke through the walls. And uh, as the defenders were endeavoring to flee out the back of the city, Mohammed II, who was in charge of the Ottoman army, decided that the Janissaries, the children of the Christians, 20,000 strong, armed with uh, shining blades should lead the charge. And so these 20,000 once children of Christians, now fanatical soldiers of Islam, attacked the defenders. And many hundreds and hundreds fell in agony and died in the despairing posture of their fall stricken, smitten by the hands of their own children. The Janissaries had come. Now, so what, you say? Well, there are Janissaries yet among us today not this time abducted by the Ottomans, but by the humanist schools of our own country, and taught the doctrines of atheism and godlessness and immorality. They have often gone back to oppose vehemently the teachings of their own parents. And many a parent has said, what has happened? Where did I go wrong? How could my child have so completely turned his back and what, on what I taught him when he was just a little boy? Well, he has learned well from his teachers in school. And this struggle for the minds and hearts of young people has been going on for a good while. How many parents? have said, where did I go wrong? I provided them the best education, sent them to Harvard. Ha! Ah, you might as well have shipped them to Saudi Arabia in 1450. They want them to have a good 
financial future, so they destroy their souls in the process. How many parents right here have sent kids to public schools and colleges because it was going to look good on their vitae and help them get a good job, only to find them come back unbelievers who want nothing to do with your religion. Yes, there are many Janissaries among us in our time, my friends. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And my friends, if we don't, in our old age, that will be the greatest heartbreak that we have. I've never seen any un more unhappy people than fathers or mothers who have come to me and, say, and said, where did we go wrong? We gave him everything. And now he's turned his back completely on everything we believe. Yes, they gave him everything but a Christian education. A Christian education is the most important thing a parent can give a child. And it also represents the largest threat to the cultural Marxists who now enforce LGBT orthodoxy and strive to implement full-on socialism. It's no wonder that religious liberty is under fire. The shock troops of tolerance demand your assent and your adulation of their far left agenda, and they are willing to coerce it if necessary. Thankfully, however, there is some recent good news when it comes to religious liberty. The American judiciary is slowly starting to get some cases right. Our own John Rabe has more. Amidst the many challenges uh, facing those who are struggling with regards to religious freedom, uh, parents' rights, the sanctity of human life, uh, we have some really bright light shining on the horizon through the United States Supreme Court. President Trump has made a priority of remaking the nation's federal courts from the Supreme Court on down, and the results are beginning to show. This Supreme Court recently, and through a number of cases, has made it clear that uh, they are there to respect and defend the religious freedom rights under the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, uh, for people in business, uh, for public displays of, of symbols for, such as war memorials. Uh, we're very excited as we move forward to see a, a real groundbreaking change with regards to case law precedents to shore up these rights of, of parents and religious institutions and people in the workplace uh, when it comes to their basic First Amendment civil liberties. In its most recent session, the U.S. Supreme Court issued a ruling allowing the Bladensburg Memorial Cross in Maryland to stand. When the court in the majority opinion said that uh, religiously expressive monuments, symbols, and practices are now presumptively constitution, the court shifted the burden around and not only said that these veterans memorials and, and like that are are part of our history, part of our heritage, and are an important part of our country. No longer can someone just drive by, find themselves offended, and tear down the memorials through a lawsuit. The Supreme Court also sent the case of Aaron and Melissa Klein, Christian bakers who declined to make a cake for a same-sex wedding, back to the lower court. Specifically, the court said they need to look at this case again with reference to the Masterpiece Cake Shop case. That's the Jack Phillips case out of Colorado. And Well, what do we learn from that? In the Masterpiece Cake Shop case in 2018, a Supreme Court majority featuring Trump-appointed Justice Neil Gorsuch ruled that the state of Colorado had acted with religious animus toward Jack Phillips. What the court is saying in Jack Phillips' case was that that was not a fair process at all. It was a bit of a kangaroo court. Uh, and I think we can prove very similar things going on in the state of Oregon as well, where we have the commissioner there saying that Aaron and Melissa Klein require, need to be rehabilitated. Well, innocent people don't need to be rehabilitated for simply operating their business according to their faith. 
in Aaron and Melissa's case, the state of Oregon imposed a $135,000 penalty against them. They issued a gag order against them. They couldn't even talk about their beliefs in the public square. Uh, that is not a neutral government towards the religious beliefs of its citizens. That is a government that is pronouncing them guilty of discrimination and punishing them for daring to hold those religious beliefs in public. But still, concerns remain. The left continues to press its agenda, often ending up back in the courts. A Minnesota case could be headed to the Supreme Court where officials helped a child receive a sex change operation over the objections of his mother. And the city of Philadelphia has stopped Catholic social services from placing children in foster homes because of their religious objections to same-sex couples. Thus, a city with over 6,000 children in foster care won't let one of the highest rated foster agencies operate unless the Supreme Court overrules them. The challenge is there. Uh, the cases we're taking on are horrific from a historical perspective, from a constitutional perspective. But at the same time, we see on the other front a revolution in our federal court system with new court appointees from the Supreme Court all the way down that give us a lot of hope moving forward in the days ahead. For years, the founding director of the Alliance Defending Freedom, constitutional attorney Alan Sears, has said that when we show up, we win. The problem is that too often Christians didn't show up. Thankfully, that's changing. As Christians, we are called to be salt and light, to engage with the culture around us. That can be difficult in an era of political correctness, when even our most basic beliefs are challenged at every turn. But this ministry has put together a new resource that will equip you in daily conversation to stand for the truth on a wide array of controversial questions and to do so with gentleness and respect. It's the new book, Why Do You Believe That? Answering Hard Questions in an Age of Political Correctness. And we will send it to you as our way of saying thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. This short book features a foreword from radio host Janet Parshall, who is one of the best defenders of the Christian faith in the public square today. Janet says, I am so thankful that D. James Kennedy Ministries has put together this handbook on how the Bible speaks to the vital issues of our times. Why Do You Believe That? lays out the most common viewpoints on both sides of most controversial issues of our times, and then provides thoughtful and biblical responses to each of them. Among the vital questions addressed are, does the Bible teach socialism? What does the Bible teach about gender identity? Are Christians haters? And what does the Bible teach about immigration? As well as many more. If you have a child or grandchild who will be on a school campus this fall, you will want to be sure that they are able to face the upcoming challenges to their faith armed with grace and with the truth. I think why do you believe that should be in the hands of every believer. So please contact us right away with your most generous gift to help us broadcast the truth, to proclaim the gospel and battle for religious freedom. And as our thanks, we will send you a copy of the brand new concise book, Why Do You Believe That? Answering Hard Questions in an Age of Political Correctness. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free 877-962-7677. 
or go online to djkm.org. For centuries, skeptics have tried to debunk the Bible, usually as part of an effort to circumvent God's laws. But as poet Samuel Valentine Cole wrote, Hammer away, ye hostile hands, ye hammers break, God's anvil stands. Most recently, two exciting discoveries have once again reaffirmed the historical veracity of the scriptures. First, archaeologists announced that the Old Testament city of Ziklag, where David spent time when he was hiding from King Saul, has been discovered in the Judean foothills. The excavated parts of the city even show evidence of having been burned, consistent with its destruction by the Amalekites detailed in 1 Samuel chapter 30. And another significant excavation in Jerusalem this spring unearthed a 2,600-year-old seal with the inscription belonging to Nathan Melek, servant of the king. This is a name mentioned in 2 Kings chapter 23, describing a rather obscure official of King Josiah's court. Since Nathan Melek is an uncommon ancient name, archaeologists believe it highly likely to have belonged to the biblical Nathan Melek, making it the first independent evidence ever to be found of his existence. As always, the Bible is confirmed to be accurate, even in the tiniest historical details, because it is the word of the living God and therefore is trustworthy and true. We can also believe and trust the Bible when it tells us that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we can believe it when it tells us that Jesus Christ died for our sins and rose again from the dead and that you can have the free gift of eternal life by putting your faith in him. If you have recently done that, or if you want to put your trust in Christ today, I have a special book I would like to send you at no cost or obligation to you. It's called Beginning Again, and it was written by Dr. D. James Kennedy, who wrote it to help new believers grow in their faith. To receive your copy of Beginning Again, just write to our address on your screen or call our toll-free number and may God bless you as you do. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Truths That Transform. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. The battle of the bathrooms, it's just, it's honestly common sense that there shouldn't be a man in the bathroom with me. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.